Hello guys. You might be wondering where I am. No, I am not on a cruise ship. I am in New York City. Hopefully you can't hear the sirens or all the crazy sounds of the building. Um, I guess I'm kind of used to that being in a ship because there's always like loud bangs and things going on, but the sounds here are a little different. Also still loud, but I did get a microphone. So hopefully it'll drown out some of those sounds. We're making it work, but um, yeah, I'm in New York City. I wanted to do a little Q and A because first of all, I've never done one before um, and things are changing in my life all the time. And so I wanted to give you guys kind of a little bit of an update tell you why I'm in New York, things like that. But I thought I would just start with like some random facts about myself. I am 28, I am from Denver. I live there randomly every once in a while when I'm not on a ship or traveling or whatever, but that's where most of my family is. I got my bachelor's degree in musical theater and dance and I graduated from college in 2017. I <laughs> just like forgot for a second. I graduated in May and then in September I did my first ship contract. I did two contracts and then I decided to move to New York in 2019. Lived there for a little bit before the pandemic hit. So I left and then I moved back home to Colorado. I was with my family for a while as most people were during the pandemic. I was actually able to keep my job that I had in New York remotely. So I did that from Colorado. After the pandemic, I did two more contracts and now here I am in New York City again. We're kind of rinsing and repeating, I guess. Okay, we're gonna start with some ship life questions because that was the majority of what your guys' questions were. So we'll get those out of the way. If you see me looking down, it's because I'm looking at my computer where all the questions are. What is one of the most unique things as a crew member you get to experience? Honestly, the whole lifestyle of living and working and doing everything on a cruise ship is a very unique experience in itself that a lot of people can't relate to. Like, it's not something that you can just try to understand. You have to really experience it to know what it's like. Maybe meeting so many people from so many different places all in one space. Like there are, I think on my last trip, there was people from 60 different nationalities. And so you get to meet all of these amazing people. And that's just something that not a lot of people get to experience unless they go and travel. And even if they do, they meet the people from that place. Um, but when you're on a ship, you get to meet people from all around the world and just hear different stories and make these really cool connections. And yeah, I would say that's really a unique thing to get to meet all these amazing people. All right, how much time do you have off every day? So this depends and the life of a performer is also very different from the life of other crew members. Um, we can't be singing and dancing all day every day. Um, and so it really depends on the length of the cruise and how many shows you have. So my last ship, we were on seven day cruises and we had two shows. But in other experiences, you know, people will have three and four day cruises and they'll have two shows. And so they'll have maybe one day off. Um, and even on that one day, they probably won't have the whole day off. They'll have to be doing flag parade or some sort of other activity that's not a show or maybe like a welcome aboard number, something like that. So it really depends on the day. But as a performer on my last contract specifically, I would have one or two full days off in the week. And like I said, it's not the same for every other crew member. If you're working in housekeeping or a bar, you probably won't have a full day off your entire contract. Okay, best advice for a new crew member. Don't spend all of your money. Um, it'll feel like you're making all of this money and you don't have any expenses because you don't have utilities and rent and things to pay while you're on board, but don't spend all your money. Try to save a little bit and get to know people outside of your department. It's really easy to just kind of stick with the people that you know, that you're working with. There are so many different people from different walks of life. So try to meet some other people outside of your circle. Do you guys have another ship contract in the works or are you both hoping to secure contracts on land? We're kind of hoping, I think, to do one more. We have a lot of goals financially that doing one more ship would really help us with. You know, we're able to save a big chunk of change when we are on board because we don't have rent or utilities. So. Yeah, that's something that we're kind of talking about is like, okay, if we do one more, we would be able to kind of do the things that we want to do. Um, I miss the travel and the adventure and getting to constantly be able to perform. So yeah, I think we'll probably do one more if someone will hire us, who knows. There are also a couple of itineraries that I would really love to do. And so if they offered us one of those itineraries, I would have a really hard time saying no, so we'll see. What is the craziest thing that has happened while on board? Um, for me, we were in, this was on my first contract. The cast was hosting a party that night and I was taking a nap, getting ready for the party. And all of a sudden I just hear this like really loud bang. And my roommate was sleeping on the bunk above me and she like peeks her head down. And she's like, what was that? 
And then two seconds later, there's an announcement and we're like, what the hell was that? Um, and it ended up that we had grounded. Our ship was leaving the port. We were in Bali and we hit the ground. They had to have divers come out from Miami to go down and make sure the ship was okay. So we were in Bali for another, I think only, I don't remember if it was a full 24 or 48 hours, but it was just kind of crazy. It was kind of terrifying then too, to be like, okay, now we just hit the ground. They say it's safe and now we're just gonna sail and <laughs> hope we don't sink, I guess. So that was probably the craziest thing that I've experienced. What was the audition process like? So I shared my entire audition story um, in I think two different videos. I'll double check and I'll link them here or in the description. But um, yeah, my audition experiences have been pretty straightforward. I auditioned in Denver. I've also auditioned in um, like Oklahoma and in um, Kentucky. <laughs> I just picked these really random places to audition, I guess. But I got here on Tuesday. And then there was an audition for Norwegian on Wednesday and I was like, I'm gonna go. And being in a New York audition is very different from anywhere else. When I did the Denver audition, there were seven people there. This audition, I think there was 200. Um, it was crazy. We did groups of 40, we went in and they taught us the combo. We did it in groups of 10, five. I think groups of five and it was just crazy how many people were there. Um, and then they made a cut and in the Denver audition when there were seven of us, they didn't do a cut was just much more relaxed. In the future, I probably would choose to go to a different city for a cruise line audition than I would for New York because there are just always so many people there. Oh my gosh, <sighs> sitting on the bed is not ideal. How long did you wait to hear after auditioning? This can really depend. Um, honestly, after my first audition, I think I might've waited like two months, but it could be a week, it could be five months, you never really know, but they do, most cruise lines say, You'll be in our system for six months. If you don't hear anything in six months, then re-audition. So in six months, you don't hear anything. I would definitely go again. How did you realize you wanted to work on ships? I think honestly, when I was in college, I had just seen some upperclassmen auditioning for ships. And when I had just heard like, you get to travel, you get to perform, you get to see the world and meet new people. It just kind of sounded amazing. And so I went for it and I never looked back. Least favorite food in the mess. Honestly, just the fact that they're like constantly the same thing over and over again just gets very old. But my least favorite thing would probably be, there's always like mystery meat, <laughs> I feel like. And all of it always has the bones in it. And I just really don't like bone-in meat. So that would be my least favorite thing. <laughs> does it get boring performing the same show multiple times a week for six months in a row? Yes, it does. <laughs> Especially when the show isn't super like demanding or challenging. After a while, you know, it really gets in your body and like you can go through an entire show. You know, when you're driving and you're like, I don't even know how I got here. You know, like your body is just doing it and you're like not paying attention and just somehow you got there. I feel like we've all experienced that. I feel like it's like that. Like you go on autopilot and you just do the show and you're like, oh, it's over, I did it. That's not like the best way to perform, but after six months, you're like, okay, I, I got it. It's in my body, I can do this in my sleep. On my last ship, one of the shows was really technical and difficult. And so that was something that I always had to be like really warm for. I had to really like have my brain on and really be thinking of what I was doing. So that was nice. That one didn't get old because it was just like, I gotta think, I gotta really work hard. Yeah, it can just depend, but I will say, yeah, at the end of the day, yeah, it can get a little old. Do you have a favorite class of ship to perform on? I have honestly only done the smaller ships. The biggest ships I have done are about 2,700 passengers. And the smallest I have done was, ooh, what was it? It was like four, like around 500 passengers. So really small. I guess I can't really say. I would definitely not love to do another 500 passenger. I would like to do a little bigger, like, for the 2700 capacity. But I honestly would love to go on like Icon or one of the really big ships and just see what that's like and do like a book musical or something. Yeah, I've never even been on those big ships. So I would love to experience them. I don't know that I would love to be a crew member on them or if I just kind of want to go on vacation on one. I can't really tell where I'm at with that. <laughs> I think maybe I should take a vacation, see if I like it. And then I could be like, oh, actually I think it would be really cool to work here. I think working on the bigger ships too, there's a lot for the crew members to do. They always have, you know, crew events on the smaller ships too, but I think that there's more bars for the crew, there's more events, there's, um, as a performer, you're able to use a lot of the guest facilities. So there's more facilities in general for the crew to use. So I think it would be interesting to try a bigger ship at some point. How many different cruise lines have you worked for? So technically four, but I've worked for Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings, which owns Norwegian, Regent, and Oceana. And I've worked for all three of those lines. Regent and Oceana are like the luxury lines for Norwegian. 
and I did the Norwegian Pride of America, the Regent Seven Seas Navigator, and the Oceana Riviera. And then I have also worked for Royal Caribbean and I did the Enchantment of the Seas. Favorite ship you've done. Uh, my favorite ship was the Seven Seas Navigator, which I know I said earlier that I wouldn't do a ship like that again because it was so small. It was the one with only 500 passengers. And I don't think I would do it again. I think the reason why it was my favorite was because of the circumstances. The cast was my favorite cast that I've ever had. Sorry to all my other casts. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people say that, that their first cast was their favorite. I don't know if that's true, but I feel like I've heard a lot of people say that. Um, and I'm still really good friends from a lot with a lot of people in that cast. I've seen a lot of them recently. And so it was just a really great cast. We all got along really well. I met Robert on that contract. Um, and then it was a world cruise. So we started in LA and went all the way around the world back to LA. We saw so many cool places, did so many things, met so many amazing people. And that was just an amazing contract. What is your favorite port? That's really hard. I'm gonna say Kator, Montenegro. It's, it's so stunning. The sail-in is amazing. Sailing away is amazing. There's so much to do just right in the port, but it's just so beautiful. It's so unique. Um, it's like no other port that I've ever been to. So I'm gonna say Kator. Okay, let's move on. A little bit away from the ship questions and uh, get a little bit more personal, kind of. What do you see yourself doing if you don't go back to ships? I don't know. This is something that I am struggling with a lot right now because I really crave travel and the adventures and everything that comes with ship life. But then I also really crave having my own space and creating a home and getting a dog and just having all of those things. And so I don't know, I'm trying to find a way that I can maybe do both, but it's just, you know, working on ships is so inconsistent, but like completely, if I were to not do ships again, I don't know. And that thought scares the crap out of me, not knowing what I would do because yeah, I do love performing, but I don't know that I see myself, obviously like I, I don't see myself doing that forever. And there are so many other things that I wanna try. There are so many other places I wanna see. I love creating content. And so for me, I would love to be able to do that full time so that I can also perform and travel and do everything else but also have an income coming in and be able to share those kind of things with you guys. Yeah, I don't know how people just know what they want to do with their whole life. I envy those people, but I also don't because it, it's exciting to be able to do whatever I want and try new things and everything like that. But there is also a very nice comforting feeling of just knowing what you want. I don't know if this is making any sense, but the answer to the question is I don't know. And when I figure it out, I will tell you. <laughs> Okay, I probably should have answered this question earlier because I think I've mentioned him, but who is Robert? Um, Robert is my boyfriend and someone else asked how we met. So we met on our first contract, the one with the 500 passengers, the very small ship. Um, it was both our first contract and at the end of it, we were like, do we wanna do another one together? We weren't really sure like, is this just like a ship thing or is this real? Um, and so we were like talking, we we're like, okay, we'll decide by Monday if we want to do another one together like let's both think about it and see because it's a big commitment to say to someone that you really haven't known for that long that you want to do another contract with them like it's a lot so we're like let's wait give it the weekend and um i think on friday afternoon we got an offer for the same ship we hadn't emailed them we hadn't asked them anything they did, i don't even think they knew we were dating and they offered us the same contract and so i think we kind of took that as like yeah like this is it's kind of meant to be so we did another one together we moved to new york together the whole story I told earlier. Yeah, we've done everything together ever since. Why did you guys choose to move to New York City? Um, auditions mostly, and just kind of thought it'd be a new little adventure in the meantime before we hopefully do another contract. Okay, I think that that is all of, all of the questions, most of the questions. I kind of got a lot, which I was very surprised of. Thank you guys so much for sending them in. If there's anything you guys wanna see on the channel while I'm here in New York, whether it's ship related or not, I have a lot of content and like so much that I can talk on when it comes to ship life. So yeah, I can make a lot of other videos about ship stuff too, but um, yeah, anything you guys wanna see, let me know below. And thank you so much for watching this Q and A. I think that's gonna be it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.